Unfortunately, every section of the MCAT is not created equal. And I've found a lot of times that when students are good at one, especially when they're naturally good at one, they come in kind of scoring well on that section to start with, that's kind of offset by being worse at another. So a lot of times people are really good at the science sections or they're really good at CP, something like that, depending on their background, but they'll end up being really bad at cars. Or I've seen students come in being really good at cars and they kind of suck at all the other ones. So today I'm gonna give you the top strategies that I would recommend for each section of the MCAT. If you don't know me, I am Maggie. I'm a third year medical student and a former professional MCAT tutor. I run this business and this channel with my brother, John, who is also a med student and a former MCAT tutor. I'm really just riding his coattails. So when I start getting into these things, I'm gonna be using a lot of language describing strategies, and that's how we call them on our channel is strategies. So if you're not familiar with those, you can go to our strategies playlist, but things like flow charting, simplifying the question sim. Those are actually going to be key points that I'm gonna kind of point out as strategies that certain sections of the MCAT tend to exploit more than others. So there are some strategies that are kind of broad spectrum. You have to know timing on the MCAT. Like for every section you have to know like the timing of it. You have to know how to review practice questions for every single section of the MCAT. That doesn't really change. But if you've ever watched some of our passage breakdowns, you'll see that like I hardly flow chart at all on psych social passages and that's because that's not a key strategy for that section. So let's get into it. Starting with CP or the chemistry physics section of the MCAT. For the chemistry and physics section of the MCAT, if you suck at this section, there's probably two reasons. You probably either are not very good at the basic sciences. A lot of people aren't, let's be real. I wasn't, I'm not like a physics head. Actually, I take that back. I love physics, but like I'm just not very, like my brain's not wired that way. So if you don't have a strong background in math and in physics, then you might struggle with some of those basic sciences that are presented on the CP section of the exam. So you may need to work on isolating those basic sciences and studying them conceptually. Really important for CP that you study these things conceptually because they're not going to ask you to list out Ohm's law. They're going to ask you about it in the context of some broader biological thing that illustrates Ohm's law and you just have to know conceptually that you're talking about the same thing. If you're pretty up to speed on the basic sciences of chem phys, first off, congratulations. But if you're still scoring low, then another thing you might be struggling at is simplifying the question stem. Again, especially with something like the math equations on physics and chemistry things, like they're, pro they're not gonna ask you like what the Michaelis-Minton equation is. They have to ask you in some elaborate way. And so how this usually comes through is that they're asking in a convoluted question. And you have to be solid at simplifying that question stem. And, and you can go watch our videos. I think I've made two or three now on simplifying the question stem, but it's like a key strategy if you want to be good at test taking at all, honestly. It is like a key test taking strategy, but it's just ever more important on the MCAT. So for the CP section, you're probably gonna have to isolate your basic sciences and work on simplifying the question stem if that is the one that you struggle with so bad. There's a couple other tidbits like recognizing units in the passage and, and things like that, math, math manipulation, there's other things like that, but Okay, I'm gonna wrap up CP now. I've t been talking about it for a while. The next section is cars. And so many people struggle with cars. That's what I struggled with. Now I actually consider it one of my strengths is to be able to read a passage and kind of get a main idea out of it. And that came from just tons of practice, which leads me to cars is mainly asking about your main idea. We talk about the four competencies on this channel, which are gonna be your main idea, your arguments, your tone, and your author's intentions. That's pretty much gonna cover the breadth of all the questions that you get on the MCAT about cars. But ideally, when you're sitting for your MCAT, you will have done enough cars practice to where you can encompass all four of those core competencies into a solid main idea that kind of samples from all of them, if that makes sense. And going forth with that main idea, you can get confidently at least like 75% of your questions right if you just lead forward with your main idea. Again, we have tons of strategies on our strategies playlist about how to get a good car score, but you can also watch our passage breakdowns. I try to go through my thought process as I'm reading through a car's passage. That's why those videos are usually so long. It's because I, I read through it and I go through my thought process. And yes, it's taking me 10 minutes to do that in these videos, but that's because I'm like narrating my thoughts the whole time and I'm 
revisiting points for a teaching purposes. When you're doing it, it should take you four minutes. And when I was doing this for the MCAT, when I was studying, it took me four minutes. So if you suck at cars, you probably suck at getting a main idea. And that's what you should work on as well as just practice, 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 repetition. The next section is the BB section, and this is where flowcharting is king. If you don't know what flowcharting is, you probably never watched an IFD video because we talk about it every freaking time. Flowcharting is basically just pulling out the relationships and the important things in the passage, paying them a little bit of extra attention and writing it down on the side. It's not science, but what it is, is hard to do at first. Now there are a lot of basic sciences on the BB section of the MCAT that may give people trouble, especially like the biochem stuff that's kind of like bordering on that mathy chemistry side. A lot of students don't do so hot at those, but we also have a lot of, like I've had a lot of students who are biology majors, biochemistry majors, whatever, and they still struggled on the BB section of the MCAT, not because they didn't know an adequate amount, like they knew a sufficient amount of biology material and then some, but they weren't good at in the passage. They were fumbling in the passage. Because when a question asks you, how the addition of some viral vector that was discussed in the passage is going to affect the mRNA levels of something else. That's not something that you're taught in undergrad. That's not something in the Kaplan books. That's not something in the IFD high yield book. That's a strategy that you need to pick up on in the passage, or that's a relationship that you need to pick up on in the passage and pay special attention to it. Make sure you're not getting it backwards. It's harder than it sounds. Go watch our videos on flowcharting if you need more information on that. But I, I do think that flowcharting is like the highest yield in the BB section specifically. And the last section is Sykes Osh. Now I, I've met a lot of people who think that Sykes Osh is the easiest section. I thought it was the easiest section, but I was a psychology major in undergrad. But right now we're working on a, a project where I'm going going through the AAMC practice exams and I'm doing the psych soch sections and sometimes I'll think I slam dunked on a passage and I'll look and I'll be like oh I got two out of five and almost every single time it's not because it's well there's two things one is something obvious and it's that I don't remember all those sciences anymore you absolutely have to be a dog about knowing like all the different psychological and sociological definitions of all the terms. I was told once that the MCAT is like a mile wide and an inch deep as far as the breadth of things that you need to know versus the depth that you need to know them. You have to, you have to know a lot of different things, but not very deeply. Psych Soch, think of it as like 10 miles wide and a millimeter deep. Like you really, sometimes all you have to know about a certain term is just like a couple words. Um, the, the macro sociological theories come to mind, especially like all you need to know about conflict theory is like a very like simple definition. And then you need to look for the words power or struggle or conflict in, in the answer choice. And that's going to be the one that's talking about conflict theory. So you have to be very good about knowing these psychological terms, but it is more memorization heavy than the other sections. And I think that the best way to kind of split the hair between a lot of those psychological terms that are very similar to each other is by coming up with examples. Like I could not remember like the heuristics to save my life until I came up with solid examples. And I don't care where you get those examples, you can ask ChatGPT to come up with examples for you. But come up with some example that sticks in your head and can display the relationship that it's talking about in that term so that when you see an analogous relationship on the MCAT you, you pick availability heuristic not because you know or care what that is but because you pick up on the subtleties of that definition as compared to other types of heuristics I hope I'm making sense so okay back to my two reasons why psych soch is hard one is that there's it is 10 miles wide and a millimeter deep like you have to know a lot of different terms but you only have to know a little bit about them you have to know like specific language surrounding them and i recommend coming up with examples for a lot of those things that are very similar to one another so that you can split that hair and then the other thing is that psych soch is dirty they will list out this beautiful answer choice and you're like you're like that is a home run i'm picking that immediately but you didn't see that they like changed one word to make it like the wrong answer choice i had one yesterday i'm probably gonna get flagged for saying something about double mc1 but 
I was doing this question yesterday and it was something about intrinsic motivation and I didn't see that it said external reinforcers at one point. And so like it was this beautiful answer choice and I was like, oh yeah, whatever, that sounds good, I'll pick it. Of course I'm going through quickly because I'm not being scored on this and I can check my answer choices after. That should not be how you guys approach it, but I've gotten tripped up on several psych soch questions just because I picked something that sounded good and I was going too fast and I didn't read carefully enough. So especially with this section, if you think that it's one of your easier sections, but sometimes you just like really mess up on it, it's probably because you're not reading carefully enough or they threw in a bunch of those terms that you just didn't have good examples for or you hadn't done enough like basically Anki cards for. So that's my strategies for each section of the MCAT. So for just to wrap it back up for CP, you probably, if you suck at CP, you probably either suck at I like the basic sciences because those are kind of hard on that section or simplifying the question stem because they can't just ask you about, you know, Pusweli's law or whatever it is. They can't just ask you what that is. They have to ask you in a convoluted way. So they get those things across, usually not as much via the passage, they usually do it in the question stem by kind of making them more convoluted. So work on your basic sciences, work on simplifying the question stem. For cars, if you suck at that, you probably suck at getting a main idea. We have a million videos on this channel about how to get a good cars main idea and we're working on a product right now that's gonna basically like walk you through it and I think it's gonna be really awesome. I'm trying not to say too much about it, but you probably suck at getting a main idea. You should work on that. Easy, right? For BB, I think flow charting and of course knowing the basic science, but flow charting is gonna be super high yield on the BB section. And then for Psychsos, make sure that you like basically have a pretty solid like Anki deck or some way to remember all of these different psych social terms because it's a lot of them. Make sure that you can isolate between role conflict and role strain. Like what are the differences between those? Come up with examples for them. Ask ChatGPT for examples of them if you can't remember them yourself. And read carefully, like take your time a little bit on psych -soch. Thankfully, they have some toss up questions that you can kind of fly through so that you can read the questions more carefully when it's important. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did like this video and leave a comment below. I feel like I haven't said that in a while. Like this video and leave a comment below <laughs> letting us know what you wanna see. I hope that you like, I got my light back. It was just behind my couch the whole time. If you want to check out all of our projects below, you can check out the links in the description, but we have a ton more coming later this year. So keep an eye out for those. Good luck to everybody. I'll see you in the next one.